What I'm about to share with you would make you 35,000 pounds from one single property. If you'd like to know how to flip houses and make 35,000 pounds profit in every house you flip, this video is for you. Hey guys, it's Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, smash the subscribe button because I talk about property investment, personal development, and how to gain financial freedom. For those who don't know me, I'm a property investor. I started my property investment journey a few years ago. I was in a job where I was undervalued, underappreciated, going nowhere. I took the leap of faith to start my investment journey by renting properties from landlord and subsequently rent these properties out. The money I made, the profit I made from those properties, I didn't used to buy my investment properties. I was able to build that for to a multi-million pound property investment. So I hope that earns the right for me to talk about how to flip properties and make massive return on those properties. I'm going to share in this video step by step on how to buy these houses, how to renovate these houses and then flip them to make £35,000 in profit. So if you want to learn that, stay until the end and watch this video. At any point you've got a question about this video, comment on the section below. I myself will look at those, comment and reply accordingly. So let's get to it. What is flipping? Flipping is the process by which an investor would buy a house and quickly renovate it and sell it on to make profit. So in essence, flipping means selling. So let's say now we want to increase our cash flow in order for us to start buying investment properties. And there's so many people that do not have lots of money to buy multiple properties at the same time. So what they do, they use the flipping strategy where they would buy a house, sell it, make profit, do it multiple times before holding their properties, which is what I'm exactly gonna share with you. So what we're gonna do in this video is basically you're gonna go out there, look for properties below 100,000 pounds. Properties below 100,000 pounds is what gets us to be able to fix them up and then sell them on for profit and these sort of properties can easily sell as well. Hence the reason why I like my £100,000 mark when it comes to investment properties. So let's jump onto the computer, see where we may be able to get properties like this. So this may shock you, okay? So if you're living in London, talking about £100,000 property, you can even afford to buy a bedroom in London for £100,000. And I'm talking buying a whole house for £100,000. So what I'd like us to look at today is a, it's a, it's a city, massive cities. You've, know, you, you've heard about this city so many times. Let's jump to a city called Liverpool. Okay, so we wanna invest in Liverpool and we want to start flipping houses in Liverpool. So we're going to use this platform called Rightmove. Rightmove is one of the biggest platforms investors do to look for investment properties to buy as well as sell. So let's go to Liverpool. Okay, so if we type Liverpool here, Liverpool comes up. Obviously, we're looking for properties to buy. Okay, so we are looking for under £100,000 and £50,000. You may be asking why for why £50,000. I like to buy properties over £50,000 because I want it to be good quality properties and properties that are in an okay or beautiful location as, as well. So we're looking for a minimum of three bedroom house and then it's going to be a house and then we're going to go find. So what we then do now, we are looking for properties that we can add value to because obviously we want to fix it and sell it to make profit. So we're going to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. All these are done up property. You can see this is off plan property. And this one also is a guide price, but it looks like it's been rented. Someone is in that property. Okay. I don't, you won't be able to buy that property and fix it because someone is there already. So this one also, let's have a look at the 60,000 one. Mm, I don't like this one. I'm going to move on. And you've got this other 60,000 one. This one also is there, but it looks like there's a tenant in it. If it's a tenant in it, I don't like to touch it. I do not want to inherit tenant. Okay. This one here looks like it's got a bare window. It's a bit of work to be done here. Okay. This looks like our bro party basically but we can go down and look if we can see anything else there's another one here for seventy thousand pounds this one also is okay could be something that we're going to look into and obviously we've got this one as well here this one also is a good one here but why do i like this one here over all the other properties the reason being is because you've got a bay window if i open it up and it's got a front kind of garden. This could be a good way to have a driveway or things like that. So that's the reason why I favor this property. Obviously it looks like 
um, it's got a garden as well okay so let's see how big the garden is okay so we go back there let's see if we can see the garden okay let's see if there's any garden in here let me add the speed let's see if the agent is brave enough to show us the back garden okay it's loading yeah we can see there, there there's a massive front here okay moving on slow to load moving on big rooms here and there anyways we can close this because that's not playing and we can then go back here you can see there, there's a back garden straight away okay so we know we have front and back garden so that then is good so what we're now going to do then basically we now know this property is in a guide price meaning we might not be able to buy it for seventy thousand pounds and because the property is also a bigger property we're going to assume we may be able to buy it at hundred thousand pounds this is just overestimating in this case so what we could do then we can say okay fine we know we can buy this property at about maybe hundred thousand pounds or so because that's the guide price um, in order for us to buy that property. We're assuming that we'll buy the property 25% over guide in this case. So let's jump onto the board and analyze this deal and see how much we may be able to make as profit from this one single property. Let's get to it. As we now know how to look for these properties online, it's important for us to talk about the fundamentals before we even start looking at the figures here. So the fundamental thing you need to be thinking about when you're looking to buy properties to sell you want to ensure that one is a property that you can add value to the property that we just saw online we know we can go in and renovate that property maybe add an extra bedroom or maybe a little office upgrade the kitchen the bathroom paint and decorate tightly do the landscaping nicely front and the back ensure maybe there's a little um, uh, driveway in front as well that's one of the fundamentals you need to be looking at properties that you can add value to because if you're not adding value obviously you won't be able to sell it and make that sort of money that's one thing you need to be looking at another thing you need to be looking at is is the location of the property if anything that should be the first thing you need to be looking at location is the property in a demand area would people be happy to live in that sort of area? Is it an up and coming area? Is it kind of a good area? Is it very close to a school, very close to a train station, very close to the shopping center? And most importantly, who your target market is. Are you buying to flip that property to ordinary working professionals? Or are you buying that property to target doctors, accountants, lawyers, people that are in a high paying job? Then obviously the location will be subject to that sort of market as well. And the other thing you need to be thinking about also is how long it will take you to do the renovation work, which I will talk to you about once we've finished the calculations. So suppose then we saw that 70, thousand pounds property and we assume it would go up by 25 percent and we know that we are able to sell that sort of property by doing our due diligence for a fair amount of money so let's look at the figure so we're going to buy that property for hundred thousand pounds so if you buy that property at hundred thousand pounds we'd need a deposit of 25 percent so 25 percent of hundred thousand pounds that would mean we need to put down 25,000 pounds to buy that property. Okay, let's now estimate our legal renovation cost to be 35,000 pounds. So in essence, in order to buy this property, renovate it, our entry cost would be 60,000 pounds. So basically, we need to be able to have £60,000 to buy the property, to pay all the extra legal costs, the interest payment, and, and uh, renovate the property. So that would be our initial investment. So now, during the renovation stage, it's going to take you time to get the renovation done. It might, take, it, may, it might take you six to eight, sometimes even maybe three months. This is where you need to be frugal when it comes to your renovation cost. You don't just go and buy what the builder recommended to you to buy. The reason being because builders are not 
investors builders are not entrepreneurs builders are not business people okay they're just wanting material to arrive so they can get their job done quickly so they can move on to the next project so here's what you want to be doing instead once they've sent you the list they've sent you the list of materials you need to buy in order to do the renovation okay get them to send you the list get them to send you their price and then you go out there and look for other suppliers that you may be able to buy the same items same materials at cheaper price that then would help you save significantly on your renovation cost because you're using your initiative you're using your time and effort to buy these properties in cheaper prices so let me give an example suppose the builder went somewhere local to buy let's say a bathroom suite and the local merchant or the local supplier may sell that for about a thousand two hundred pounds you can go online places like ebay right search for a bathroom suite that you can buy for about 700 pounds that would be a nice amazing bathroom suite even maybe more co better quality than the one they've got nearby so these are the things that makes the difference when it comes to renovation perhaps you're looking to buy plasterboard multi-finish things like that go in see what their quotation is if you go to places like joycin or any of these places they're a bit expensive compared to wix b and q and all the other sort of places that are a bit cheaper so it's all about looking where you can get your materials cheaper reasonable that will get to do the job and here's the thing also you want to remember is that when you're renovating you always have to have your target market is in mind because obviously your renovation is based on that basis isn't it so assuming that you went in you, you only invested total of renovation cost legal cost and everything for 35,000 pounds you've done that and the property looks absolutely beautiful it's now time to look for how much you can sell the property based on our due diligence we know we can sell that property anywhere between 175,000 pounds to 190 thousand pounds so obviously what we're going to be looking at here is to estimate that sale price to be 175,000 pounds so assuming now we're going to be able to sell that property for 175,000 pounds so 175,000 pounds would become our gross income this is the money we make for selling the property without deducting any of our cost and you may be asking how soon are you able to sell a property so the thing that i do with my investors is when we are about to complete the renovations that's when we would instruct the estate agency to come round and value the property and put the property on the market. You may be thinking, how would they put the property in the market if they have not got the photos of it? So what we do, we get a graphic designer to design the property in a 3D to put that online for now. You know, like how they um, sell properties off plan. That's exactly what you do, basically. You, you design it on a 3D image and obviously upload that to allow the agent to be able to sell that property before even you finish completing the works. So assuming that they've done that, they put that property for um, uh, £175,000. So suppose now you've got someone who wants to buy the property, they're happy to buy it and they've paid for it, that money has gone to your solicitor's account. So that money would be what your solicitor would re will receive. But the first thing your solicitor will do is to look to see if you have any existing loan. So obviously in this example, we do have an existing loan. If you remember the 100,000 pounds, we only put down 25,000 pounds, meaning the bank had lent us 75%, which would have been 75,000 pounds. So that's the existing loan we've got there. 75,000 pounds. So what your solicitor will do at this point is to pay that money to your lender, the first initial lender. And then obviously then the remaining balance would come to you. Okay, the, the remaining balance will come to you. And then from that remaining balance, we now know it costs us 60,000 pounds to renovate the property, which is our initial investment, okay? So our initial investment is 60,000 pounds, okay? 60,000 pounds is what we've invested to be able to sell the property at that price. 
Now, we also have something that we call holding cost. Holding cost is the cost you incur to keep the property until it sells. This could be your electricity, your gas, your cleaning, to maintain the garden, the front garden, until the property is sold. And obviously you've got your agency fees as well, because obviously we pay our agent to sell the property for us, aren't we? So let's estimate that to be five thousand pounds okay that gives us five thousand pounds so if we minus the seventy five thousand our initial loan the sixty thousand of our initial investment and then our five thousand all of a sudden we've got our thirty five thousand pounds profit hello you've got thirty five thousand pounds in three to four months job Okay, that's the profit you would have made from that single house. This is how you make £35,000 in one house. So if you're clever, now you know what you're doing here. You repeat the process. Imagine now you repeat this process, let's say three times a year. That would have generated you in a profit, a profit of 100 and five thousand pounds that is hundred and five thousand pounds you've made believe in me or not that is way more than the uk average salary okay that is way over the uk average salary as we all know the current uk salary is about thirty six thousand pounds so obviously you have triple that amount whilst you spend your time the way and how you want to spend it whilst making serious return on your investment. So this is all amazing, right? It looks absolutely beautiful on paper, but here's the thing. If you implement and learn, get someone to mentor you, guide you along the way, it would only expedite that process. It would not just get you to start Googling stuff. You will go to someone who will help you, mentor you, take you along the way to get you to start making that sort of money. Let's go for worst case scenario. Let's just say you only did two of these properties a year. You're talking about 70,000 pounds. Again, that is still way more than the average salary in this country. So my advice to you is basically is to get someone to guide you, mentor you along the way to help you achieve that sort of figure. It could be anybody, but if you're interested to work with me personally to help you achieve figures like that, there's a link on the description below. Click on that link to book one of my specialists to see how we may be able to help you use property as a vehicle to make recurring income so that that would allow you to make work as an option instead of an obligation. So the things to note here also is once you've got this property going, obviously, as I said, you've got the holding costs that you could incur and that property might not sell within three to four weeks. That holding cost may increase. So in essence, the longer the property stays in the market, the more cost it would incur. So in essence, if you can sell this property within two to four weeks, at even maybe 33,000 pounds net profit is worth doing that so you can go again repeat the same process so don't be greedy here if you've got someone offering you 32,000 33,000 pounds go for it so that you can flip that property quickly to go on to the other one if you could do three or four of these a year you will be, be laughing and obviously work will become, become an option instead of an obligation i really hope this video has been helpful if it has been helpful smash the like button below subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos i look forward to sharing the next one thank you